Assault Android Cactus was a different game right out of the gate. The ease the tutorial with telling you all there is to the game really set the tone. Hey, this is the game in like two minutes. Have fun. And fun was had, as well as other things, while I played through this game. I enjoyed every minute of this jam of a game. And although I did end up grinding quite a bit for the S plus ranking achievement, it is still one of my favorite games I've played this year. Hey everyone, Ezor here, and today's Achieve review is on Assault Android Cactus. Let's break it down. It's okay, folks. I'm the police. Commence being calm. That was amazing. Now, first off, this is a twin stick shooter, meaning one stick moves, one stick shoots. What they did right with this game was give you a second, more powerful weapon that you can switch to at any point in time, as long as it's not on cooldown. When you swap, you actually have a fraction of a second of invulnerability. And that's what makes this game so freaking fun. You see the massive laser of death coming right at you and you just do a little spin and slip through it. It's so awesome when done well and the game is a great teacher in the fact that it'll tell you when you're doing it wrong by killing you. And you can't get mad at the game, I mean you want to, but you can't. It's your own fault for screwing up the timing, not the game's fault. It just politely told you that with a mine or two. Now since the game is so straightforward, the story is much the same. It's a, hey, find out what's up with the ship story that doesn't really mean anything. Cactus is very much a shoot first, second, and then ask a question followed by more bullets kind of android. And it works. I don't care why I'm there, or the fact that one of the androids is crazy. I just want to kick some ass and dodge some laser beams. The few story parts that are there take a much more silly tone than serious, and I like that. Keep it simple, stupid is a great way of doing things with these kind of games. Now as to the characters, you start out with four, but end up with nine total to play as. They all play different enough that you need to really learn how their primary and secondary weapon work, instead of them just being carbon copies of each other. And that was great! I thoroughly enjoy that. I don't really like when it's just a whole bunch of carbon copies or repainted models just for the sake of ease. I just didn't like any of them besides Cactus. Starch was fun, uh, Holder was nice but annoying and I couldn't keep the chain going, and the rest were... well, there. I hated Shiitake and was not a fan of Lemon or Coral. Aubergine left me scratching my balding head as to how to play here seriously, and I need to keep that hair. Licorice was powerful but way too skill shot based for my tastes. Peanut was nice to play, with her drill being a bit hard to master, but she was still fun. So like I said, I played just as Cactus because it made sense. I know a lot of people swear by Holly, Starch, and Licorice, but I just wasn't feeling them. But the great thing is that since they all did play so differently, if I didn't like Cactus, I could have easily found another one to love. You unlock a new one each chapter so the game keeps giving you new androids to play with. Just figure out which one you love and stick to it. Trust me. More on that later. The levels were awesome, and honestly I loved each one in its own way. From the simplicity of the first few levels, to the awesome synth club style for the third zone, to the insanity of the zone 5. They all kept true to the zone's theme, and were different enough to not be sick of them. And the music was just on for all of them. I was jamming out to all of zone 3, and the level detail in the background with the sound waves was just too cool. Great job, team. However, I feel like the same amount of love could have been shown to the bosses. The first one was amazing in the fact that you need to learn its phases and figure out when to hit it, but the second and third ones maybe took me two tries uh, instead of several to learn. And I one shot at zone four because it just lacked any really feeling there. Honestly, the stages were a lot more fun than the bosses because of this, and that's just a disappointment, kinda. For such a great game, the bosses were a bit too bland. Wait, I shouldn't say that about all of them. Zone 5 had two bosses, and those were both a complete shit show. First off, Licorice is just a joke for how overpowered she is. 
I get the fact that she's the same model as you are, but newer. However, that doesn't mean she has to be so much more powerful. She would often just one-shot me with a level of precision humans can't make. I mean, come on. I'm across the screen, bobbing between pillars and enemies, and she gets through all of that to kill me? No? Seriously? No. And once you get past her, it's onto the actual final boss. Which gave me some serious problems at first. Not getting past its phases, oh no, just the last phase where it's just a timed rush to kill everything and you had just enough time to do it. So I guess after saying that, only half the bosses kind of sucked. Huh, yeah that makes sense. Either way, they could have been shown a little bit more love in my eyes. Okay, so you've beaten the final boss, unlocked all the androids, can't be much more to do in the game, right? Wrong. We unlock a boss rush after you beat the game. And then there is an infinity drive mode as well as a daily drive mode. These are mainly there just to give you a randomized experience to keep the game kind of interesting, but I usually skip those things unless I have to go through them. Really the game itself is maybe 4 to 5 hours if you go through all the stages in the boss rush. And honestly you can just jump right to the bosses and kill them, so you could theoretically beat this game in like under an hour. But don't skip the stages, they're so fun, oh those stages are so awesome. But if you like to go for it all like I do? There are a few more hours needed to wrap it all up. You get some of the achievements without trying too hard. Uh, getting a chain of 100 is possible on every stage, and S plus will be easy for the first zone. Five of them are restore related. Uh, another five for unlocking everything with the credits you get for beating every stage. There are four that are tied to bosses that require you to do a specific thing, and they range from super easy to incredibly difficult. You need to place eight different androids, which is good because there are four that require a specific one to use their weapons in some way. From killing three enemies after drilling into a bigger fourth enemy, to shooting a cannonball into a hole. There are two that are skill based, requiring a chain of 1000 and also to be the level without getting hit, but really don't take too long to get those if you know how to get them. Blowing up three mines from killing one seems hard, but on later levels you get eight mines thrown at you at once. And the big mines really make it easy as well. You have to complete the boss rush mode, which isn't bad since you have to get really good at fighting them anyway for reaching layer 25 in infinity drive mode. That one can be really annoying as it takes about 30 minutes of pop for each attempt and it might take more than one attempt. And finally, you need to get S plus ranking on every single stage. Every. Single. One. The bosses? Yep. Zone 5. Uh huh. The licorice fight? That is the one that will probably make or break your run. You need some severe patience, a mastery of the invincibility frames, and the will to have an hour and a half spent trying, just trying to get to Licorice without losing your chains so you can attempt one more time to not get sniped from her stupid OP main weapon. Ugh. Assault Android Cactus has so much going for it, and it does so many things right. The controls are awesome, the gameplay is flawless, the enemies are original and different enough that you never feel like it's just a new color on an old mob, but the bosses could have been a bit better, and the licorice fight is just the most ridiculous auto-aim piece of shit and could have been toned down a bit. But honestly, I got it all with the only 15 and a half hours clocked into the game, according to my playtime on True Achievements, so not sure on that accuracy, and only about 8 of that was spent going through the S plus ranking run. It took about 15 to 20 minutes per stage for the S place ranking, save a few exceptions, and it really just came down to knowing the stage like the back of my hand in the end. So with all that said and done, I say give this game a go. If you're a fan of twin stick shooters and don't mind a bit of grinding, you can easily get all the achievements. Otherwise just enjoy it for its simple gameplay. I know I did. way to fix things don't worry i do this kind of thing all the time fix things or destroy multi-billion dollar pieces of equipment on impulse both thank you all for watching i hope you enjoyed the video let me know your thoughts on the game if you played it who was your favorite android why did you have troubles with any of the achievements did you have trouble with any of the parts of the game i do have videos for all of the achievements of this game so there will be a playlist at the end of this video so click on that one if you need some help I do also have advice videos on how to get to floor 25 on the Infinity Drive, as well as getting S plus ranking on all of the stages. 
you enjoy other video game related content, that's kind of what I do. So consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching. I've been Ezor, and until next time, keep your story going.